Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another video. And today we've got something very different because my friend Kevin from the phenomenal channel, Kevin Cool X, will be stepping in to cover me. Now, I haven't had my baby yet, but I'm super busy and this is something you guys will see more of as my wife does have our second child. Guys, Kevin is doing me a huge favor by stepping in here and he's got a phenomenal YouTube channel, which I'll link below. He covers Halo news, gameplay, and he's up there with the greats and in my opinion, one of the most underrated Halo channels on YouTube. YouTube. We've blown up a few channels in the past. I would love to do that to him. Right now, Kevin is at 11.6 thousand subscribers. He deserves a lot more than that. Link to his channel down in the description in the upper right hand corner, but let's roll the content. Studio head of Halo Infinite, Chris Lee, has left the project. Now, this may sound bad, but we've seen similar situations in the past with other games. So, what does his departure really mean? Well, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Now you're probably watching this video going, wait a minute, you're not a card's letter. And you would be correct, because my name is Kevin and I run a Halo news and information channel over here on YouTube and Eckhart's Ladder has given me the opportunity to appear on this channel while he's busy supporting his family with their second newborn child on the way. So a big congrats to him and his family. So let's get right into the info here. Just to make sure we're all up to speed, Chris Lee, the head of FPS and the Halo Infinite project as a whole, has left 343 and he's quoted saying this, I have stepped back from Halo Infinite and I'm looking at future opportunities. I believe believe in the team and I am confident they will deliver a great game and now is a good time for me to step away. Well, even though he's saying that he's leaving on his own terms, I have a feeling that's not exactly what's happening. I have a feeling what's actually happening here is that this is just kind of a consequence of Halo Infinite not meeting the deadline of the Xbox Series X release. In business, deadlines are deadlines and if you can't meet those, well, there are going to be consequences. I've actually had a chance to meet Chris Lee just real briefly, but you know, he's a really nice guy and I really appreciated his vision that he had for Halo Infinite. So it is sad to see him go, but he has been replaced by two rather notable people. One being Joseph Staten, which I'm sure you all know him. He's the guy who helped create the universe of Halo. He was part of the original trilogy and Reach as well when it comes to creating Halo games. So he knows his thing or two when it comes to Halo. He's going to be leading the campaign side of things. And while they also bring on Pierre Hintz, who is the head of publishing on 343 for the MCC, which you guys don't know, they have basically have resurrected the MCC from the grave and brought it to a really great product now. It's crazy to think that Chris Lee's job has been handled by two people right now. Now, this isn't a sudden cut out of nowhere. This has kind of been a planned thing happening really ever since the campaign reveal that we had back in July. We soon after, back in August, had a confirmation that Joseph Stane and Pierre Ince will be working alongside Chris Lee. And just two months later, we see Chris Lee leave the company. Now, initially you think, oh my God, the sky is falling. Everything is going wrong with this game and you know you are right to be concerned but we've seen these situations happen in the past with other game studios so i kind of wanted to analyze those situations and see what would happen with halo infinite even halo 2 went through what's called development hell uh pretty much every developer who has been interviewed about that development cycle tells you yeah everything you hear is true pretty much about that development cycle Halo 2 was essentially created in 10 months, which is kind of insane to think about. Obviously, that was back in 2004, and game development is much different with Halo Infinite being the largest Halo game ever to be created. So, a little different there. So, there is still light at the end of the tunnel with this development cycle. But other games like Anthem, Destiny, Mass Effect Andromeda, and also Quantum Break have all had their development issues with people shuffling during development cycles. So, how did those games turn out? So let's dive right into it. So let's start with the most recent example that we're talking about, Anthem. Yes, we all know it has not really turned out so well, though they did say back in, I believe it was February or January, but they wanted to rework the game, reinvest in it to make sure it's a game that everyone wants to play. Though it certainly went through its shuffling of video heads when it came to the development of the game. Around mid-2017, several Bioware staff departed the studio, and even one of the lead gameplay designers died. Bioware knew that they were going to miss their expected quarter 4 2018 release, but EA refused to allow the game to be delayed past March 2019. So around October 2017, Casey Hudson returned as both project lead and new studio head, along with a few other leads jumping in in place for Anthem's development. 
Bioware developers speaking anonymously to Kotaku essentially said that the game was developed in a year before the release, mainly due to leadership pressures from EA. Due to the stress of the working environment Bioware was under, many people left during the 2017 to 2018 development cycle. Most notably, Drew Carpetian worked on the game's writing before leaving early 2018. Now the difference between what's happening with Anthem and what's happening with Halo Infinite right now is that we've just had a few handful of people leave. We've had Mary Olsen, We've had Tim Longo and now Chris Lee, who are all leads at 343 leave over the course of the last two years. Or in this situation, it sounds much more like a mass exodus happening in a Bioware and a lot of people switching out, which we have not seen that yet with Halo Infinite. But again, we'll keep up to date as this is a developing story. So make sure you follow on the channel, guys. Now, going back a few years, another Bioware game actually had some similar issues, which was Mass Effect Andromeda. Again, with Casey Hudson <laughs> leaving Bioware, seems familiar right here. Not after that, Gerard Leoni also departed and Bioware brought in longtime Mass Effect writer Mark Walters, who was based in Edmonton to serve as Mass Effect Andromeda's new creative director. Different people point to different reasons for these personnel shifts, but the directional change had a massive impact on production of the game as Leoni had been leading the story team up until that point when Walters took over. When Walters took over, he brought a new vision to the game. And of course, we all know the issues that happened with Mass Effect Andromeda, and ultimately the game actually wasn't that bad. It just didn't live up to the standards of what Mass Effect franchise has brought to all of us. Yes, the facial animations were terrible. Yeah, there were some awkward moments in there, but overall, like, it wasn't like the greatest game, but it wasn't certainly an absolutely terrible game. I think how Halo Infinite differs from this situation is that most of the content for Halo Infinite has been created. Known Microsoft and Xbox insider guy who kind of has been able to leak a lot of information. This is the guy who leaked the information about the grapple shot, which is going to be in Halo Infinite. He leaked the cinematic art style that we saw in God of War 4, which seems to be pretty accurate as well. So he's been around quite often. Clobro put out a tweet saying that the game is more or less content complete. They can only focus on the technical aspects now. I absolutely do expect Halo Infinite to be released in 2021. Now, just my assumptions alone, I would totally agree with the situation as the game that we saw for Halo Infinite, that's the game. Like, I don't, don't think we're gonna see any massive changes to the gameplay or, or art style or anything like that. I think we're gonna probably be seeing a lot more functionality improvements because there was a lot of pop-in textures, a lot of pop-in geometry, and the lighting wasn't exactly that great either. So what we saw, is Halo Infinite, and that was without RTX on. So given that the game has been delayed, RTX is most likely going to be a launch feature now, which it previously wasn't. Quantum Break, if you guys remember that game that was released out in 2016. And that game was originally supposed to release in 2015, but then was delayed to avoid any competition with other Xbox One exclusives to be pushed into the spring release of 2016. But during the development of Quantum Break, the CEO of Remedy Entertainment left the company to go for another job. Like this is the guy in charge of the whole company. He just jumped ship right before the release of one of their biggest games they ever created. But the difference here is that you can see with the Remedy CEO, he left a big long like thank you note to letting everyone to saying, hey, it's been great working here. I'm moving on. Well, Chris Lee's was just like, a couple sentences and that was about it. And when Quantum Break released, yeah, it didn't receive like overwhelming praise, but it was a solid game and it sold rather well, but maybe not to the expectations of what Microsoft had. As for any hopes for a sequel of Quantum Break 2, not really happening. And the game was rather well received, you know, some sevens, eights, some, you know, I saw sixes, I saw some nines thrown in there. So a wide mix, so it kind of depends on your experience on it, but it was still a solid game. And if you wind the clocks even further back, guys, we can talk about Destiny actually had a lot of development issues as well. In fact, Joseph Staten left the company of Bungie before the release of Destiny. And keep in mind, at that point, Bungie had been working on Destiny before they even started working on Halo Reach. Essentially, Joseph Staten presented this story to Bungie and then it was ended up just being thrown away. And you can kind of tell what happened with the story in Destiny 1. It wasn't exactly the best, but guess what? 
After continuous updates and a very dedicated community stuck with the game, they helped improve it, and now it's one of the biggest franchises out there. But what does the departure of Chris Lee from Halo Infinite really mean? Well, we're not seeing a mass departure like we saw during Anthem's development. We're not seeing complete reworks of ideas like we saw with Mass Effect Andromeda. And we're also not seeing the positive departure when it comes to Remedy's CEO or the complete rewrite of a game like we saw with Destiny. I think what we're seeing is just a business decision being made due to the inability of 343 not being able to hit deadlines that we knew were going to happen. They knew that Halo Infinite needed the release November 2020 and they just weren't able to make that deadline. Obviously, COVID was a big hit. It was a massive hit to the development. You know they lost at least a month, two, maybe even three, especially during the last year of development, which is a most crucial time for a studio to be full heads down. But the people replacing him, Joseph Staten and Pierre Hintz, are very well capable people, and I do believe that they'll be able to still provide an excellent story with an awesome multiplayer, and hopefully we get a chance to play Halo Infinite Spring 2021. But who knows, next week we could see the entire studio leave. You know, it's still a developing stories. So if you guys want to keep up to date with everything going on with Halo, check out the links in the description down below. Take you right over to my channel. We'll be keeping you guys update with nearly daily content over there. So I really appreciate if you guys want to come by and check it out. Thank you very much at Cards Ladder for giving me the opportunity to present some awesome Halo information to your community. And congrats on your second child. And to all of you watching, thank you very much for your time. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.